In your days of scrolling through articles or magazines, I'm sure that you've come across the term high-value men. For those that haven't, high-value men is a term used to describe attractive and successful dudes. For the record, no girl will be willing to pass on a high-value man because they're considered the complete package. So, even if you are yet to attain the status of a high-value man, this episode will walk you through how these men talk to women and make them wet before they even get laid. They don't try too hard. Women love guys with sugar-coated tongues. She wants to hear that she's the most beautiful girl in the world, when, even when she knows that she's not. They also love being gifted nice things like expensive jewelry and chocolates. For this reason, guys tend to shower a girl that they seem to have fallen for with praises and gifts. However, high-value men tend to take a different route. Here is the secret, bud. Although women love praises and gifts, they often lose interest in men who do this often, and high-value men know this. So they tend to starve women with excessive compliments and gifts. They don't try to impress women. They hold great confidence which flows through when they converse with a woman. This doesn't mean that you have to be proud to be a high-value man. Being comfortable in your own skin does the trick, so dude, don't be a simp. Don't be overly concerned with pleasing a woman. Once she notices that you aren't her muse, she will begin to see you as a high-value man. They know how to shatter her ego. Most women have overbloated egos. You can't blame them. Most of them have been worshipped by men all of their lives. High-value women can easily detect women with such egos and will not boost their egos further. Wondering how they do this? Picture this scenario. A damsel walks into a mall and all the guys around turn to glance at her. She notices the eyes of simps around her and walks majestically to gain their attention more. While the simps will pay for her groceries just to get her number, high-value men will act like she doesn't exist and might snub her if she makes a move to initiate a conversation. You might call them rude, but high-value men are far from it. They know a lot of guys make advances at these girls and she derives pleasure in turning them down. And so, to be the different guy, they do the turning down instead. Remember, girls want what they can't have, so paying no attention or turning down a damsel with an overbloated ego will make her see you as a guy different from other guys she's met. Be a high-value man. They flirt with confidence. High-value men know flirting boosts attraction and they will use this to their advantage. Reasons why you see most high-value men randomly walk to a lady and tell her how they feel their lips look kissable. Expressing emotions is quite an arduous task for some men. These are the novices in the dating game. To be a high-value man, you have to confidently express what you feel about a girl, giving no room for fear or rejection. Only women shy away from expressing their feelings. Real men don't. So buddy, be bold and make that first move because that is what high-value men do. Flirting doesn't have to be complicated. Remember to keep it as simple and as fun as you can. Aside from the possibility of getting her laid, flirting is also a way to gauge her interest in you. Observe her mood while flirting. If it's positive, then choose yours for the taking. If it's not, walk away. They don't use cheap pickup lines. Picture this. You walk up to a girl and you tell her she looks beautiful. After which, you request her number. She refuses to give it out and she walks away after some back and forth. You observe another dude walk up to her and after conversing with her for some time, hands her his phone to place her number there and to your surprise, she concedes. You begin to wonder what you did wrong. <laughs> well, buddy, your pickup line was cheap. Know this, girls get approached all the time. And she might have heard the line that you used on her repeatedly. High value men don't go about recycling pickup lines, instead they're creative when it comes to using them. No girl will turn down a well-crafted pickup line that leaves her grinning from ear to ear. Some may even dish pickup lines for just go for the H-I word. You're probably wondering if this can get girls. Well, it can. High value men believe that they hold enough charisma and they don't need a line from Google to get them girls. They believe in being themselves and they never pretend to be who they're not. For this reason, when they seem unable to come up with a genuine pickup line, they dish the whole pickup line idea and they go for the kill by being themselves. High value men, oh man, they listen more and they talk less. They're really good listeners. They know women want guys who listen when they talk and comment only when necessary and they use this to their advantage. Now, but being a good listener helps you understand what's being said better 
and it gives her the impression that you value her. High-value men pay attention to when a woman speaks, they respond when necessary, and they ask questions when it matters. To make that connection, be more of a listener than a talker. This will give her the impression that you value and care about her. High-value men know this, and they're always attentive when a woman speaks. Be a high-value man today. They know how to keep things interesting. When dealing with women, try to be as unpredictable as possible. Women love men that they can't predict, and high-value men know this. Once a man is inconsistent in his dealings, the woman's curiosity becomes aroused. At this moment, she will continue to look forward to your next step, unsure of what it will be. Always try and be interesting and add new and exciting topics to your discussions. Add questions about her life, past relationships, things she enjoys doing. Never avoid having a good conversation. By doing so, you're going to solve mysteries that other guys fail to solve. You're going to know her weaknesses and her strengths, and you're going to be able to use them to your advantage. If you play your cards right, you're going to get her dancing to your tune in no time. They don't try and be too nice. Being Mr. Nice will help you get the girl, but being too nice will make you lose her. Every girl wants a guy who'd treat her nice. Buy her expensive perfumes, take her on expensive dates, get her gifts when she least expects, and do things that would keep her smiling at all times. At the same time, they dislike guys who don't know how and when to say no. They don't dislike him per se, rather they tend to not take him seriously. High-value men can tell the difference between being nice and being too nice. They know when to draw the line between making her feel special and being her plaything. This is because, if you're overly friendly, she may begin to think that you want something in return, which might not sit too well with her. So, but act friendly, but don't overdo it. Let her see that you're kind without you having to explain the reason for your kindness towards her. Your kindness should not be directed only to her, but to everyone around you. Try not to look fake and see her become yours in no time. They're encouraging. It's a fact that no woman wants to be around a man who pulls her down or acts an obstacle preventing her from achieving her goals. High-value men know these, and they use them to their advantage. Picture this. Between someone who makes you feel better, do better, and become better, and another who has a way of bringing out your worst attributes while discouraging you from taking up new challenges, who would you pick to date? The one who makes you a better person, probably, right? I mean, that's a pretty obvious, stupid setup for a question, but it is what it is. Women also face similar situations and often choose those who make them better. Have you ever strolled into a room and suddenly your eyes fell on this drop-dead gorgeous lady whom you just couldn't take your eyes off of? And while your soul wants you to walk up to her, you might find yourself wondering, how on earth do I strike up a conversation with her? Well, we've all been there before. But get this, while you think that talking to her probably feels like trying to dance to a minefield, there's actually a way that 99.7% of them want you to talk. And once you know how it's done, chatting up any girl will be too easy for you. So, of course, the question is, how do the majority of women want you to talk? Here, let's get into it. Modes of communicating. To be part of this social world that we built, there are social rules that you must follow. There are also rules to communicating and you feel how much they matter when you're trying to impress that girl. Now, there are two modes of communicating to understand, indirect and direct communication. Indirect communication involves saying something without actually, you know, saying it. It's like a polite smoke and mirrors act designed to save one from coming across as blunt or rude. For example, let's say, after weeks of internal struggle, you finally summon the courage to ask her out, and her response was a classic, you're cute, but I'm not interested. Now that is a simple example of indirect communication right there. She essentially said no without coming off as rude. On the other hand, we have direct communication, which is obviously when a person tells you clearly when they say. Now, here's the thing. Indirect communication has traditionally been associated with femininity and is the default setting of most women. Most. Meanwhile, direct communication has associated with masculinity until fairly recently. These days, a lot more people are into indirect communication, both male and female. But what's interesting about starting and building relationships is that human nature doesn't go along with these changes. Yes, more people tend to 
talk in codes through indirect communication when you're approaching a girl, she still wants a man. Therefore, she wants you to talk like a man. Indeed, 99.7% of women want you to talk directly. When a waitress asks you, what's your order? Rather than reply with, could I have chicken and fries, please? You reply with, I'll have chicken and fries, thank you. In the first reply, you're not direct. You're more like asking for permission, while in the latter, you're letting her know you know exactly what you want. Listen, you already get a sense for this once you understand that women love confident men. So what is confident about you if you can't even say exactly what you mean? But hey, relax before you walk up to a girl in a bar and tell her how you want to have sex with her. No, direct communication does not mean being crude or rude. It just means being in control and being clear with your words. Why do women like men who use direct communication? Direct communication is a hallmark of a dominant male. It shows confidence and assertiveness. The key to this approach so that you don't come off as rude is to show optimism. Your voice should carry the confident expectation that she'll agree with what you're saying since it's correct. You see, starting with a positive outlook can work wonders for you. For instance, consider these two ways to ask her out. I want you to go to the dance with me tonight, versus will you go to the dance with me? The former oozes confidence and is so much more attractive in real life. To begin speaking in this direct, appealing manner, kick things off with I when making requests and use more statements than questions. Like, by now you should know that women don't like questions all the time very much. You see, men who use basic direct communication gain a lot of respect, especially from people who lean towards indirect communication, whether male or female. For instance, imagine you're at the movies with a girl and she shivers, saying, it's cold in here. Chances are she's indirectly hinting that she would love to borrow your jacket. If you communicate directly and powerfully, she'll give you more respect than if you just said something like, Do you want me to cover you with my jacket? Do you want, do you want my jacket? How to use direct communication when trying to build attraction. So, you are on a date with a woman, and she seems a bit on the quiet side. Well, what do you say to get the ball rolling? Well, here's something to always remember. Resist the urge to go on a verbal marathon. Most men, in their eagerness, make the mistake of talking and talking and talking and talking until they talk her out of a date. One of the biggest relationship buzzkills is when men out-talk women. While you might hear the occasional complaint about men who don't talk, what women are usually after is men who listen and talk relatively equally. So, instead of obsessing over what you're going to say or jabbering away, shift your focus to creating an environment where she feels comfortable talking more. Yeah, you heard that right. Your first rule for how to talk to a woman is simple. Don't talk too much. Instead, listen more. Here's the why behind it. Women thrive on communication because it stokes the flames of attraction. If you yap more than she does, she'll sense your lack of self-control. She will sense your neediness, as well as the lies that you might unknowingly sprinkle while trying to look cool. During my amateur days, I once went out with a girl, and after settling down and ordering some drinks, I started yapping about the parties I'd been to and the girls there. I had heard that you shouldn't make a girl feel like she's the only one when talking, so I said all those things to make it look like I was a player and a very fun guy. Total bust. She wasn't into it, and everything ended that night. On a side note, if you're with a girl that's into guys that actually do that, she's not the one. She's not a high-value woman, and you should leave her for the streets. So, in essence, you don't want to say too much on your first try. She needs a man. A man who's direct, who truly sees her, hears her, and genuinely cares for her. This is what fosters a sense of security, enabling her to open up to you. It all begins with you making her feel safe enough to express herself. But how do you do that? Before we get into that, why don't you hit the subscribe button to support the channel? Do the same for the like button if you're enjoying the video. All done? Let's continue. How to get her to open up. Alright. The girl you're interested in is just a few steps away from you. You want to approach her. You're thinking, what should I say? Well, if you stepped into the room and you already made eye contact, you should approach her immediately. Why? Be well, you need to remind yourself that confidence increases your chances with women. Look, the lack of it 
completely reduces your chances. If she's already seen you and she knows that you've seen her and then you went to a corner to try and think of what to say, she's gonna immediately see the lack of confidence. So, if you want to prepare a speech, make sure it's done before you see her. But look, the best way is to not prepare a speech. The more natural the conversation starts, the easier it'll be for her to trust you and open up. So, approach her with a smile and a simple, how you doing? Of course, you can increase your chances if you come up with something more interesting, but trust me, you can't go wrong with a simple, direct greeting. So, from then onwards, you simply make a statement, listen to a response, and then pause before responding. When she comments on something, instead of jumping in right away with your thoughts, feelings, and ideas, restrain yourself. Encourage her to talk, but don't do it by asking stupid questions. Don't start asking private questions either, like, where do you stay? Instead, when she just told you something, you can follow up with, well, when did you first start thinking about that? When she starts, when she asks the question, be direct, be polite. It's always wise to move the discussions to topics that you're good with, but still, say little. This is the thing. You want to make impactful contributions to the conversation while being in control and confident. You want to come off as someone who knows what he's saying, but is also very interested in what she has to say. You don't want to come off as a tricky person who's indirect with his words and therefore lacks confidence. When you speak with power and directness, you're essentially pressing that magical attraction button hidden within women. A smile accompanied by genuine compliments. You ever thought about the impact of your smile? Indeed, studies have shown that nonverbal communication, including smiles, accounts for about 50% of interactions. So you definitely want to use that cute smile. But here's something that makes your smile even more effective. Let's say that she just completed an important project. You should give her a genuine compliment along with your best smile. You can smile and say something like, you work so hard, it's no wonder you're so good at what you do and I love you for it. The thing is, you really don't want to limit your compliments to her looks, so appreciate her intelligence, her kindness, her wit, her achievements, whatever she finds important. And when you acknowledge her strengths and her accomplishments, you're showing her that you value her for who she is as a person. Confidence. Having confidence in who you are and what you can achieve is so important. Listen, you can do everything right when it comes to women and you will still fail if you don't have confidence. Back in my college days, I was too shy to put myself out there, so I'd sit in the back of class afraid to speak up or join study groups. My lack of confidence really put people, especially girls, off from getting to know the real me. I shit you not, it wasn't until my final year that I decided to start challenging myself, so I joined the debate team to practice public speaking in a low-stakes environment. And at first, it's terrifying, but with each speech, I felt myself growing more comfortable in my own skin. I also started saying yes when friends asked me to social events, even if part of me wanted to stay in. It was a battle back and forth, but I let the right voice win. Pushing past that initial discomfort really helped boost my self-assurance, and today, it's not even a battle. I just do it. You see, true confidence isn't about thinking that you're better than anybody else. It's about feeling comfortable and secure with both your strengths and your weaknesses. The key is focusing on your positive qualities and accomplishments rather than dwelling on perceived flaws. Make room in your brain to recognize your flaws, but do not dwell. Now here's something to practice. Make a list of the things that you're proud of, big or small. That is going to remind you of how far you've come and take away a bit of that pressure. Remember, having confidence also means being able to laugh at yourself, to just laugh at the absolute dumbass that you are from time to time. Don't take yourself too seriously, and don't worry about coming across as perfect. With confidence, a woman may fall in love with your imperfection. Ability to pick the right topics. So you just started going on dates with this special lady, and as they say, first impressions last forever. So how do you pick the topics to discuss? That's a serious matter that can make or break the entire date, so how do you do it? Well, you definitely don't want to be the guy in the house party who just can't stop ranting about his controversial political views or blowing hot on the latest conspiracy theory. You see, the best conversations are lighthearted, and they allow both people to find common ground. Now, topics like traveling, food, and often work, work. 
You guys can swap stories about your favorite destinations and cultural experiences. And from there, the conversation can proceed in a very organic way. A wise approach is to focus on positive subjects that promote connection, like hobbies, interests, arts, sports, or pop culture. Asking open-ended questions is a great way to learn from the other person in a low-pressure kind of way. Complimenting an outfit is also a safe conversation starter. From there, look for opportunities to find mutual interests that you can discuss at a more in-depth level. It's best to steer clear of religion, politics, or other hot-button topics. Creating options. You want to be irresistible to women? The secret might be a lot simpler than you think. Being likable and interesting is all about broadening your horizons and put not putting all your eggs into one basket. Imagine this. There's a special someone you've got your eye on and you've fallen completely. It's easy to get tunnel vision and hang your hopes on this one person. But here's a pro tip that a lot of investors offer. Diversify. Yeah, no, it works for relationships too. You want to chat with different people, go out with friends, keep meeting new faces. That does two big things for you. First, it boosts the odd of clicking with someone who really gets you. And second, it makes you way more intriguing to the ladies. But why is that? Well, when a woman sees that you're the man in town, someone who's got a lot of people vying for his attention, you become the prize. It's all about supply and demand, baby. If you're the guy who can strike up a conversation with anyone at any time at any place, that's pure gold. It shows confidence and charisma, and hey, who doesn't love a social butterfly? But it's not just about looking good on the outside. By branching out in your social life, you give off a vibe that you're secure and self-sufficient. No girl wants to be with a guy who reeks of desperation. It's about finding the right balance between being available and not being overbearing. Build familiarity. If you're aiming to be unforgettable to women, learning how to make them feel seen and appreciated is key. Think of building familiarity as crafting a secret handshake or shared inside joke. It's about making memorable moments that stick. Here, compliments can be a powerful tool when used right. Imagine you're at a supermarket, you're casually tossing veggies into your basket. You spot a woman with a unique piece of jewelry. That's your way in. The jewelry likely wasn't a random choice by her either. It might express her style or hold sentimental value. Thus, a compliment about the jewelry wouldn't come off as just a few nice words. They would come off as the recognition of her individuality or something more personal. But here's the thing. It's not just about what she wears. You gotta notice all the small details, the effort that she put into her look, or the book that she's engrossed in. These details can be very powerful during your conversations. Will you fumble? Perhaps. Early tries might be awkward or fall flat, but it ain't no big deal. Every attempt is practice honing your ability to see and appreciate the people around you. With time, everything will come together. Remember to build familiarity. You need to know her goals. You need to know her hobbies and anything that makes her tick. Then you'll need to find common ground, and that is how you build familiarity. The kind where you become the man who gets her. That's the man that she's subconsciously going to get addicted to, because guess what? She's never going to be able to find a replacement. The three-minute theory. So, you're looking for a way to quickly click with someone? Have you heard of the three-minute theory? Trust me, it ain't no magic trick, it's actually rooted in psychology, and it is surprisingly simple. So, what's the deal? It's all about nailing the first impression and laying the groundwork for a connection in about three minutes. That sound impossible? Not with this tip. Remember how hearing your name being called grabs your attention? Well, that's because our names are deeply tied to our identity. During a chat with her, using her name a few times can fast-track the bond that you've been building, so let's break it down. You meet someone new, and she says, Hi, I'm Emma. Now, you sprinkle her name into the conversation. Maybe, Emma, what brings you here? Or, I actually I agree with you, Emma. It's very subtle, but it's effective. You're not just another conversation to her. You're somebody who's paying attention to, at the very least, her name. That's it. But hey, you don't want to overdo it. Remember, you're aiming for a familiar, not a fanatic. Repeating her name like a broken record is more likely to send her running than swooning. The ideal frequency, according to psychologists, is three mentions in three minutes. And that's it. Incorporate this into your daily interactions. Consistency is your friend here. And remember, confidence is your wingman in every social dance. If you don't get the reaction you were hoping for, keep your head up. It's not personal. It's just part of the game. There are countless opportunities out there, and each one is a new chance to shine. So stick with the social skills that you're learning, and before you know it, they're gonna become second nature. 
takes a while to build habits. It takes a lot of sucking before you build those habits. And remember, for every person who might not have responded the way you hoped, there will be 10 more who appreciate you for what you have to offer. Now that you know the skills, all you gotta do is practice them, and before you know it, you will become irresistible to women. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. We'd love to help. Also, you can learn more in the next video.